Today we're going to be talking about ways to prove triangles congruent. And the first way is by side, side, side. So if you have triangles and so two different triangles and I know this side is congruent to that side that side is congruent to that side and then the third sides are congruent so all three sides are congruent we can say they are congruent by the side 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 postulate similarly if we have triangles congruent we can say they are congruent if okay I have vertical angles equal if that side's equal to that side that side is equal to that side I think about it as arcing it out or drawing it side angle and side side angle and side now angle side angle similarly if I have two triangles that are congruent If this angle here is congruent to that angle, the side that's what we call included in between two angles. So the top and one of the bottoms are equal, angles are equal, and this side included in between those two angles are congruent. Therefore, those are going to be congruent by angle side angle. Okay, so first few examples. Can these be proven? If so, write the name of the postulate. Basically, those are reasons in your proofs. So I have one of each one of the sides marked with two. I have one side marked with one. AC is congruent to itself by reflexive. So I can say triangle ACB is congruent to triangle. Now notice where you should go. AC. I started with angle A over here. This angle A and that angle A are going to be equal. So I need to start with angle A in the other triangle. So I went ACB. So I have to go AC since side AC is corresponding D. And why are those congruent? By side, side, side. The next example. That common side that they have in common is EG. And you would have to state that that is congruent to itself in a proof. So triangle FEG is congruent to triangle. So you went FEGH, because that's corresponding to angle F, EG. So my order matters. And that's by angle, side, angle because as I draw these out I have angle side and then another angle okay now next one well I know vertical angles are going to be equal we can assume things like that but I don't have anything else side side angle side side angle since that spells a bad word is not a way to prove triangles congruent so those are not congruent Now I have parallel lines. Parallel lines, when they're cut by a transversal, that angle and that angle are going to end up being equal. The common side in the middle, that is congruent to itself. So the congruent statement is the listing the triangles. So PSQ is congruent to triangle. So PSQ, RQS. And why is that? That's going to be side, uh, yes, yeah, side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. Okay, now some proofs. Everybody's favorite. HI is parallel to JG, and HG is going to be parallel to IJ. So that's what we are given.
Okay, we are given that. Next. Okay, use that parallel. They've given that, that to us for a reason. Start marking up your triangles. If I have a transversal and I have parallel lines, I know alternate interior or three and four because parallel line, parallel line, transversal, angle three would be congruent to angle four. And similarly, angle one is going to be congruent to angle two because I have parallel lines, transversal. Now think of what we have. We have angle, that common side. I need to list that common side. H, J is equal to itself by reflexive. That's where that reflexive piece is going to come in. Let's go back to our proof, or let's go back to our reason here. Parallel lines gives us alternate interior congruent. So then step four, well, I have angle side angle, so I have our triangles congruent. by so angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. And I tell my students, this is like a checklist. Have I listed the two angles? Yes, I've listed the two angles. Have I listed the side that's congruent in our proof? I've listed the side. So when you list angle, side, angle, think of it as a checklist. You have to have those two angles and the included side. HJ is considered the included side in between those two angles listed in your proof. Next example, another proof, but this is a good proof because I think it's going to show you guys something that you're going to forget. DC bisects, so a segment bisects another segment. And also AC is congruent to BC. So I'm given that. I'm going to mark up that AC is equal to BC. Now, the definition of a segment bisector. Definition of a segment bisector was a segment that intersects another segment at its midpoint. So we have to state here, because DC bisects AB, D is the midpoint. of AB before we can say that AD is equal to DB. Okay? I can say step two because of definition of a segment bisector. Then I can say AD is equal to DB because of definition of midpoint. Those were those two definitions I gave you guys. So that's equal to that. Remember, I'm just trying to get the two triangles congruent. DC is equal to itself, so I need to state that. Remember, it's a checklist. DC is congruent to itself by reflexive property. Then step five, triangle ADC is congruent to triangle BDC. By what reason? What have I marked up? I've marked up side, side, side. Now make sure you've listed all of these sides in your proof. I have DC. I have one set of sides. I have AD and D, uh, congruent to DB. I have another set of sides, and we were given the third set. So our side, side, side works. Remember, it's like a checklist. 
Okay, your lesson questions. Give the postulate that proves the triangle is congruent. If not possible, state not possible. Okay, so you're going to give me those postulates from today's lesson.